Hello everyone, my name is Meryl. I run a platform called Pasta Social Club, which is all about making new friends over fresh pasta. I am also now Food52's resident pasta maker, which if you had asked me, Meryl, what is your dream job? <laughs> I think that this would be very high on that list. So I'm super happy to be here with all of you. Today, I'm going to show you how to make ravioli from scratch. And no, it does not need to take eight hours of your life because I have been there. It's super simple and anyone can do it. The dish I'm gonna be showing you how to make today is what I am calling ravioli alla Sorrentina. It is a dish that I'm recreating from my honeymoon in Italy when I was casually on a cliff in Sorrento gazing towards the Gulf of Naples and the island of Capri. It is definitely the most relaxed I have ever been in my life. So I'm really hoping that this recipe will bring some of that Italian summertime magic into your home as well. So without further ado, let's get cooking. Okay, everyone, I already have my pasta dough ready to go. And when making filled pastas like ravioli, I almost always use an egg-based dough because not only is it traditional, but it has great structure and great flavor. Once the dough has rested for about 30 minutes at room temperature, it's time to roll out our pasta sheets. I'm using a manual pasta roller here. It's a Marcato Atlas 150 wellness to be very specific, uh, but a stand mixer attachment works great as well. You can, of course, also be an absolute hero and roll your dough with a rolling pin, which is completely doable and one of the best arm workouts of your life. The first thing to remember is it's preferable to roll out pasta dough in batches. This will make the sheets easier to manage and the dough far less likely to dry out before you can use it. It's also crucial to keep any unused dough tightly wrapped in plastic or a damp dish towel at all times. To start, I'm cutting off about a quarter of my dough here, and I'm just gonna flatten it out with the palm of my hand as best I can, maybe smush it between my fingers a little bit so it's thin enough to get through the machine nice and smoothly. Then I'm going to run it through the thickest setting of my machine with one of the tapered dish ends going in first. If you have a Marcato, that's setting zero, and for KitchenAid, that's setting one. If you have another model, leave a comment below and I'll happily give you my best guess. Now I'm left with a longer oblong shape when really I want a nice even rectangle. So I'm gonna fold those tapered ends into the center a bit like an envelope and then smush it again with my hands. I'm really looking for the width of this little pasta envelope to be the same or similar enough to the width of the roller itself. Now I'm sending the dough back through the machine. On the thickest setting again, don't touch the dial and boom. We've got a gorgeous pasta rectangle with as much area as possible to make our ravioli. Next, I'm gonna roll the pasta progressively thinner, once on each setting until we get to about six or seven. You wanna to start to see your hand through it, but it shouldn't be so sheer or delicate that you're worried it might tear. Personally, I tend to skip every other setting because I'm incredibly impatient, but you can certainly roll the sheet through each one. While I'm doing this, I usually keep my eye on one edge of the pasta sheet to make sure it's lined up with the edge of the machine so everything goes in evenly. If the dough starts to stick to itself, go in with a light dusting of flour on both sides before rolling and that should definitely do the trick. The last thing I'm going to do is just trim any uneven edges so I'm left with that perfect pasta rectangle. I also like to smush any dough scraps into a little ball and keep them wrapped so once all of my fresh dough is gone, I have a big ball of scraps to roll through at the end. Now that we have our beautiful thin pasta sheet, the fun can officially begin. First, I am going to fold the sheet in half like a book and mark the midway point by creating a visible crease with my finger. Everything on one side of that crease will be the bottoms of my ravioli where I put my filling and everything on the other side is going to stay untouched for now. Next, I'm going to very lightly mark the outlines of my ravioli so I know exactly where to put my filling. I'm using a two inch cookie cutter, but you can use a glass or whatever similarly sized rounded object you may have. I'm also leaving a bit of space, maybe about a quarter or half an inch around each outline in all directions so the ravioli don't unexpectedly run into each other later. Then I tap very lightly with the cookie cutter, but I'm not trying to cut into the dough just yet. Now it's time to go in with my filling. This one is a mix of three cheeses, ricotta, parmesan, and Monterey Jack. I know Monterey Jack may come as a surprise, but it's actually the closest relative to a local Italian farmer's cheese that was in the original version of this dish in Sorrento. It's a total game changer in this recipe. There's also some fresh marjoram in there, but you can leave that out if you can't find it or if you're just not that into it. 
The key with filling ravioli, and most filled pastas for that matter, is to leave a good amount of space between the filling and the edge of the pasta sheet and pile upwards rather than outwards. Otherwise, the pasta may very well explode when it cooks, and that would just be absolutely devastating after all of this hard work. When in doubt, start with a little less filling and build it up once you're feeling more comfortable with the process. And now the moment of truth. I'm going to use the original crease as a guide and carefully drape the other half of my pasta sheet on top. There we go. Okay, this part is key. I'm going to remove as much air as possible before sealing the ravioli. Otherwise, we're running into possible explosion issues again. So I'm just gently tracing my fingers around each filling pocket and pushing the air out as best I can to the nearest exit. A little trick I learned while working in restaurants is to take the blunt side of a cookie cutter or a slightly smaller glass and gently move it around each little blob of filling so it concentrates a bit more in the center and looks just that little bit more uniform. If you're a perfectionist like me, this may or may not be the highlight of your entire day. Okay, we're just about done. I'm going to cut out my ravioli with a little twist of my cookie cutter. You can go in with a fluted or a straight cutter, mix it up to your heart's desire. It really doesn't matter. Then I'm going to go back over the edges with my fingers and press firmly. Don't be shy, this dough is very resilient, both to make sure they're sealed tightly and to thin out those edges a little bit so they cook more evenly. I'm then going to hold my finished ravioli on a baking sheet with some semolina flour. You can also use cornmeal, polenta, or a dry dish towel and repeat the process with the rest of my pasta dough. After spending a very decent amount of time getting this far, the last thing I want to do is spend hours at the stove simmering sauce. Luckily, this one is quick and only has three ingredients, not unlike Marcella Hazan's famous tomato sauce. Since all great things begin with butter, I'm going in with two tablespoons here over medium heat, just stir it around and hope it melts a little bit faster than mine did. Next comes the garlic. I have four cloves of minced garlic here, but there's really no limit. So six, eight, 10, that all works for me. Cook it for about 30 seconds. You're not looking for color, just for your house to smell a little bit like garlic. Now in go our tomatoes. I'm using a mix of fresh and jarred tomato puree here since it's tomato season, but you can use whatever you have available. Then we're gonna bid our sauce farewell for about 15 to 20 minutes until the tomatoes caramelize and darken in color. And here we are 15 minutes later, lots of steam happening. Our sauce is nice and bubbly. There's really only one more thing to add and that is more butter. <laughs> a good four tablespoons more butter, plus of course salt and pepper to taste. And that is it, sauce is done. Okay, my friends, here we are, ravioli alla Sorrentina. I cooked the ravioli for about two to three minutes in well-salted boiling water, then transferred them directly to the tomato sauce and cooked them for another minute to absorb all of that tomato-y, buttery goodness, then topped it all with some fresh basil leaves, and I'm fully prepared to eat all of these in about five minutes if I'm taking my sweet time. Okay, so that plate of pasta did not last long, but thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or ideas of pasta-related content you'd like to see from me or from Food52, please leave a message in the comments, and I really hope to see you next time. Bye!